A 63 year old male with PS1 complaining of retrosternal pain and vomiting containing undigested food particles came to our OPD. An evaluation found to have a tumor in lower one third of his surveys with involvement of G junction on endoscopy. Biopsy turned out to be moderately differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. FDG PET was done, which showed an FDG with Esophageal wall circumferential thickening involving the lower one third of esophagus and G junction with periesophageal lymph nodes and lymph nodes along the left gastric vessels. Two cycles of neoadjuvant chemotherapy with TPF was given. Review PET CT showed near complete response of the primary and periesophageal lymph nodes and partial response of the lymph nodes along the left gastric vessels. Patient was planned for robotic transthoracic mechanism esophagectomy with gastric pull up. The blueprint of the operating room theater. The patient is positioned in a supine position with arms abducted, and the robo is docked from the left side, and the access is through the right side. You can see the patient in supine position with the right arm abducted. These are our standard port placements. A midline is drawn and another parallel line is drawn to it, it's seven centimeter apart. No port is placed in this space and the scapular outline is drawn the camera port lies just below the tip of the scapula whichever interpostal space it is and r1 r2 after putting the camera are placed with adequate spacing an stent port of 12 mm is kept between the r2 and camera once the ports are placed the robo is dropped from the left side this is the position of the robo after docking. You can see the vision cart and all the arms which are far enough apart so that to avoid any external clashings. We start with division of the mediastinal pleura below the azagous vein near to the lung. Once the mediastinal pleura is cut you can identify the lymph nodes. This is a subcarinal lymph node and you can see a bronchial artery close to it. To try to preserve it and not to injure it as it is a direct branch of aorta and once the subcranial lymph node is removed you can see the clear space between the posterior surface of the pericardium and the surface. The lymph node is retried through the assistant port and this is a, a vascular place where you can do sharp dissection gently retracting the lung and the pericardium. As you come lower now you face inferior pulmonary ligament which is divided with sharp dissection and all the periesophageal lymph nodes are taken. Be careful not to injure the lung as it can cause air leak. The inferior dissection once it is done we come superiorly to the carina. Be careful and identify the bifurcation of the trachea. Here you can see the vagus now which is divided after it gives branches to the tracheobronchial tree and this is the most critical step as you create a plane between the left main bronchus and the esophagus. You have to be careful not to injure the posterior membranous part of the left main bronchus and all the lymph nodes which are seen are taken along with it. The dissection is continued till opposite distal pleura. Small small branches to the lymph nodes are seen which are cauterized to avoid any bleeding. Now once it is done, we go to the posterior surface of the esophagus where you identify the thoracic duct using ICG technology. Generally we give preoperatively ICG in the first web space between the toe and the second finger and as well as inguinal lymph node. Once the thoracic duct is identified, the medicinal pleura is divided, safeguarding the thoracic duct and a gentle Retraction on the esophagus, you can see clearly the avascular pain which is dissected with a sharp dissection. And this dissection is continued inferiorly till you can see the left crest of the diaphragm. The thoracic part of the phrenoesophageal membrane is divided and the esophagus at the gastroesophageal junction is separated from the diaphragm. Here you can see opposite pleura and the dissection is continued carefully avoiding all the vital structures and the esophagus is mobilized all around.
Once the esophagus is mobilized up to the azygous vein, we had to take care that not to injure it. We divide the pleura above the azygous vein. And we create plane all around it. And we mobilize the esophagus around the azygous vein and we clip it and cut the azygous vein, taking care of any bleeders. Once the azygous vein is divided, we cut the medial pleura superiorly and start the suprazygous dissection. Here also there will be a clear vascular space. The main concern with suprazygous part is the thoracic duct and crossing as well as the right and left recurrent laryngeal nerves. Once the, once the esophagus is retracted to the left, the main important structures will be the posterior wall of the trachea where here you can see where we are dissecting and the thoracic duct and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve. The dissection is continued superiorly taking care not to injure the posterior wall of the trachea which is membranous as well as the right and left recurrent laryngeal nerves taking care to remove all the lymph nodes as possible. We continue the dissection till the thoracic inlet. So the thoracic phase is completed, the patient is placed in supine position and the tube is changed to single lumen tube and the robo is read out from the head end. The assistant and the scrub nurse stand on the left side of the patient and the patient is placed in reverse tendon position with right limb at a lower level to avoid any clashing with the arm. This is our standard robotic port placement for the abdominal part. Clearly the camera arm is docked from the head end at the level of head followed by the other arms and they are equally spaced to avoid any external clashing. We start our dissection along the superior border of the pancreas, taking all the nodes of level 8A that is along the hepatic, common hepatic artery. We have to be very careful with a gentle retraction of pancreas. Here you are able to see the pancreatic tissue retracted and as well as the common hepatic artery. All the nodes along the artery are carefully dissected out and removed. Here you can see a huge node along the left gastric vessels and all these are matted. So we took a vascular stapler and took both artery and vein together along with the node. Then we proceeded with our dissection along the crust of diaphragm. Here you can see the caudate lobe of liver onto your left. Once the stomach is mobilized from the crust of diaphragm and the G junction is mobilized by dividing the phrenoesophageal membrane, the lower end of esophagus becomes free. Here be wary, there will be short gastric vessels which can bleed as you are seeing in this video. It is advised to take an harmonic if you have. With the harmonic, you complete the dissection of the phrenoesophageal membrane as well as the small vessels which are seen there. After this, the short gastric vessels arising from the splenic vessels going to the fundus and cardia are taken care with the harmonic. Once the G junction is completely mobilized, you will be able to lift the lower end of the esophagus, fundus and cardia of the stomach and you will be able to see the spleen from posteriorly and here you can carefully dissect the short gastrics. There will be two layers here. The upper layer has the short gastrics, lower layer, layer has the splenic vessels. Here we are dissecting only along the upper layer. Hence the splenic vessels are safe. Once dissection is done enough, we go divide the greater momentum. We lift the stomach with the R3 
and a gentle traction on the transverse colon makes the momentum taut. We have to be very careful not to injure the vascular arcade of the stomach along the greater curvature and once the lesser momentum is opened, it's a cakewalk. You can easily divide the momentum with the help of a retraction from the R3 lifting the stomach and a counter traction from your assistant along the transverse colon. Be wary not to injure the transverse colon here. Once the dissection is done superiorly, you will be able to connect with the dissection where you have done from posterior superiorly along with the G junction. Here you can clearly see the dissection which I have done previously. Once it is done, we leave the stomach, we come down near to the pylorus and we start our dissection in a retrograde way from antrum, pylorus and duodenum so that the enough stomach is mobilized. Be careful here, the right gastroepiploic vessel which is the pillar vessel which supplies the entire stomach tube will be here. You have to take care not to injure it. At the same time you have to mobilize the stomach tube enough so that it will come into the neck. Once the abdomen part is over, we will undock the robo. We give a vertical incision along the middle border of the sternocleidomastoid on the left side identify the esophagus be wary of the recurrent laryngeal now once it is identified we cut the mucosa 5 mm beyond the muscular layer and thus the esophagus is completely free now we give a small vertical midline incision above the umbilicus around 5 cm apply wound guard pull the esophagus down and bring the entire esophagus and stomach through it then we mark the stomach tube once it is marked we form the stomach tube. We use a trilinear powered stapler. Once the first stapler is applied, we just give the cut along the part of the stomach which will be removed and do a pyloromyotomy to avoid any gastrostasis. Then we make sure that the print in the stomach is in the specimen part and start a firing the stapler. Once the stomach tube is completely formed, we give IV ICG of 3 ml. Then we check the vascularity of the stomach tube. Here you can see the entire stomach tube being lit from base to the tip. Thus, the vascularity is confirmed. After this, we do the anastomosis with a powered stapler. We close the neck over a CRD and FJ is done. Patient is shifted to ICU for one day. Oral sips are allowed from POD1 and FJ feeds are started. ICD removed on POD2 and patient is discharged on POD3. On POD7, we do a oral swallow leak test and if it is negative, we will remove the neck drain and start orally and remove the FJ once oral intake is adequate. Thank you.